Well, good morning and welcome to Bowtie Life. It is time for the October Garden Tours. I really can't believe it. We're in October of 2023, and uh, for the past year and a half, we've been taking a monthly garden tour, uh, kind of getting a personal log of everything that's going on in the garden for the month, for the past month. Uh, since um, the last garden tour in September, the weather has definitely changed. Uh, we had we were very warm this summer. We had months and months and months of over 90 degrees. Uh, because we live in Destin, Florida, between the Choctahatchee Bay and the Gulf of Mexico, the water temperatures were really warm and it kept our lows uh, some nights even in the 90s. And so we were warm all the time, never a low, which really makes a lot of difference. And having lived in places where we have uh, uh, big variation, 20 and 30 degree variation in highs and lows, and then very little variation, uh, sometimes as little as four degree, four or five degrees variation. Uh, it's, it's, it's harder on me to live in this area because I find that if I can cool down uh, a little bit, um, you know, like in the morning to get out, I feel a lot better. But boy, when it's hot all the time outside, it is exhausting in the garden. So anyway, um, let's go ahead and get this started. We're going to start off with a little more notes on the weather. And uh, yeah. Let's go. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So as I already mentioned, this is my personal log. Uh, I go back and look at these to refer back to what happened with the weather. Um, since September, we had, like I said, we had the change. Um, we had a few weeks in September, last two or three weeks, uh, where things changed to 90 and lower as for the highs. And now in the past uh, week and a half to two weeks, we've had several uh, days where the high was in 70s, which was very nice. Uh, we actually got down into uh, the upper 50s for a low a couple of nights. Uh, we had the big cold front that pushed all the way out Florida. Uh, if you watch the weather, you, you'll, you'll know the one I'm talking about. The first big push that went all the way to the Bahamas uh, just made it beautiful here and, and made it. This is the kind of weather which is the people who live here, which is the reason we live here because of this weather right here. It is amazing. Uh, our low temperatures um, are in the mid to upper 60s. Most mornings, uh, we still have a few in few low temperatures in the 70s. Our high temperatures run between uh, 75 and 85. Um, with the cold fronts coming through, it's a lot less humidity for the most part. We did have a big storm push through. Um, Hurricane uh, Lydia from the Pacific, the remnants of that blew across us and uh, really drenched us for a couple of few days made the human in fact the human when the humidity is like that you can literally see the humidity falling in the air not just standing in the air falling in the air so uh just short of being classified as a mist is <laughs> is how i like to think of it when you wake up in the morning everything is wet so just super super high humidity um we have an outlook where we're supposed to have some cooler weather and that's changing the growing conditions of some things in the garden which is uh, getting a little exciting because things are changing. And uh, uh, October, October, can't believe it is October of 2023. Uh, in fact, um, today is uh, Eclipse Day, um, uh, uh, October 14th. Today at 12.15 for us here in the Panhandle will be uh, the Eclipse. I actually have a couple extra in case there's anybody around me that needs some to view the eclipse. Uh, I intend to see it. Maybe I'll even get a picture in. Uh, if I do, I'll put it right here. Uh, if not, well, I didn't get it, <laughs> but I'm gonna try really hard. Um, let's see. Okay, so another thing is um, we have the uh, map of the property right here. Uh, this, this map will show you where on the property we are at and give you an idea of how big our 100 by 106 prop, uh, foot property is. We're just uh, over or just under a quarter of an acre and uh, we've 
converted as much of this as we can to gardens and growing food for the most part. Uh, there are a lot of pollinator beds, a lot of flowers. Uh, there's one flower that we're going to talk about back over here that uh, is pretty toxic. Um, I really want I want to keep it because it's just an exotic, beautiful flower, but I don't know. We'll have to see if it survives my next culling. <laughs> so anyway, um, all that being said, let's get on with it and uh, take a look. We're going to start over there in the uh, strawberry patch. Um, we did lose some of the strawberries. Let's go take a look at that real quick. So as always, the pile of wood chips, that is going to be gone either this month or next month and uh, we'll hopefully we'll see the sidewalk again very soon. I have been uh, uh, talked to by a city employee that would like to have their sidewalk back, which is fully understandable. This bugs me as much as it probably as much as it bugs them. But uh, the strawberry patch, now the strawberry patch, you remember we got a lot of weeds in here. Uh, it did choke out a lot of my old Walmart strawberries, which are in the front, and I call them Walmart strawberries because they started from a Walmart uh, strawberry, organic strawberry that I purchased at Walmart, pulled 100 seeds, planted them, and got four plants. Those four plants produced enough to fill this front whole front bed here. Uh, there's still some down in here. Uh, there's a few around. But this summer, with all the traveling we did, it got really rough up in here. There's another one over there. I can see there's one struggling right there. There's a couple over there. They're in here. They're mixed in here. But uh, I will be getting those going. Uh, I know there's a big patch of the Walmart strawberries right in there that look very strong. And then we get over here to the Ozark Beauties. These, these Ozark Beauties go all the way across the back. And you can see they're even mixed in with these uh, weeds in here. We're going to be reworking this whole bed this winter and uh, doing it right so that uh, we can get real strawberry production out of here. Now, we did get 24 pounds out of this this past year, um, which I'm very happy with. That's a, that's a good number. But uh, see if we can do better, especially about the weeds. This was just a, a wake-up call for me. Uh, just trying to keep things in control. Okay, so we come down here. We have uh, two jalapeno plants right here in the grow bags. Uh, they have been harvested and they are getting ready to put on their new flush. Interesting thing, this one here, if you look back in the last month, this thing was bare. Uh, in fact, I thought this, this uh, jalapeno would be done for, but you can see that it's coming back. I mean, there's a jalapeno right there. Uh, coming back to, I can see one, two, three, uh, four, five. There's a good size one right there, five. Uh, so we six. Yeah, there's a number of jalapenos coming back. So this thing started putting on flowers. Uh, now that's one that looks kind of nasty. Just pull that. We don't want to waste uh, energy of the plant on something like that. But there's a half a dozen to a dozen jalapenos on that one. This one over here had been a hero. It's just going and going. Now these plants are well over two years old. So... They have done very well. It's got one red one up there at the top, but uh, I don't see any others. I may just harvest that one for the fun of it. Uh, but they both just come back. I harvest and they just seem to come back endlessly almost. So uh, chocolate mint up here is doing good. Uh, this pot here has been doing doing good since I put it in. Uh, the uh, the mint, I have mint all over the property that keeps the squirrels at bay. It doesn't eliminate them, but it does keep them at bay. So uh, I do like having the mint in my garden beds, uh, especially around things that might be more affected by squirrels. Uh, coming back around here to that we have the turtle bath and this basil. Now you'll notice most of my basil is going to seed. And they are, in fact, you can see a bee right there. I've been letting the bees have them. And which means they are probably bitter, not good for eating anymore. But we're, I'm going to let those things go all the way to seed, and hopefully they'll replant themselves a little bit somewhere. Uh, I will try to collect seeds from them as well. Um, the pomegranates, uh, same two pomegranates that died. This one here is still producing fruit. Uh, I did not harvest any fruit this year. I let nature have all the fruit. This one does have a lot of suckers that I need to clean up. Looks a bit rough. Okay, so, and we come back around here, down here, this rosemary, 
Now this rosemary I planted several months ago and it seems to be doing pretty good. I'm trying to keep the weeds from immediately around it down here and uh, doing good for the most part. Considering as much as we've traveled this summer, uh, it was kind of an unusual summer. So uh, I got a bit behind everything, but um, I expect this rosemary is gonna just shoot out this next year. This is gonna be a good one. Uh, this plumeria is obviously not planted in its permanent spot. Uh, it looks like we still have no, we did have flowering down here. Um, in fact, it looks like we might get one more flower. I did not notice that. Uh, don't see any, oh, well, now over here on this one, looks like we might have, might be getting ready for some flowering. I can't tell if it's going to or not. With as cold as the weather's getting right now, we'll just have to see if it survives the winter. I did get uh, word that we may have a cold winter this year. So the, uh, the oak trees are dropping their acorns early, which typically means uh, rough weather, I believe. So this uh, brown turkey fig that now, if you haven't seen, this is the brown turkey fig that I thought was absolutely dead like three or four times over the past year and it just keeps coming back. Now it's coming down to the end of its season. It has a lot of fig rust, um, which is very normal this time of year. Uh, I did get the one brown turkey fig off of this that was very good. It wasn't very big. It was only, you know, golf ball size, but uh, it was delish. So moving along to the front door, of course we are in full fall swing with fall decor out. We don't decorate a whole lot, but we do decorate. Uh, the mums are just getting ready to bud, which is very exciting because uh, it will be time. Uh, we are having a big group of friends over uh, on Thursday. This is Saturday, so hopefully by Thursday these will have started to bloom and be all pretty for that gathering. Uh, the hedges got trimmed last month, still look pretty good. Um, also, uh, in the window there, we have all our seedlings, and here's a B-roll of what the seedlings look like. We have got to get these planted up. I am, I have been neglecting, severely neglecting these because we have been super, super busy. I'm hoping that next week um, I will be able to uh, get this, get these up potted. And in fact, I see some of the that are in the back are hanging down over the back of the tray. Anyway, we'll work on that. So around here was the next fig tree. Uh, this is my, what I'm calling my Perkins fig. And there are actually a lot of figs on here. They are very small, uh, but I did want to show over here to the right, we have two. And I'm gonna keep an eye because these might be ready to pick tonight. They actually look like they're on the verge of being ripe. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, they're small but we'll at least get a taste. Mrs. Bowtie and I will both get a taste. This time she will get to share because it's the weekend and she's home from work. So there's some random uh, sun chokes popping up in my garden. This is of course the artichoke patch and uh, we have one bell pepper down here. It actually has a lot of blooms on it, a lot of attempts, uh, like there's one right there. Uh, there's another one. Oh yeah, here it is down here. And I actually saw a third one. Um, excuse my shadow. I can't see it right now. There was a third one somewhere around here. It may have been picked off or fallen off. Um, I only w will allow a couple grow on this at a time. Uh, with the leaves curled inwards like that, it tells me that it's not, is definitely not getting enough water. So I need to uh, come up with a solution for that. There is a uh, watering, a small quarter inch tube head over in the weeds here somewhere. I can extend that over to this bag, make sure it gets good water. Uh, coming around here into the grass and weed patch. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty rough, but underneath here, oh, well, no, no. First off, the yarrow. The yarrow is, which has been going all year for the first time, uh, it is thick. It is really thick, so I ha have a lot of hope that this thing is going to take off next year. Uh, it's also starting to pup out, which means it's making pups, small plants next to it. So it's it's growing in space. I want that thing. I'd love to have a nice ball of uh, 
of flowers, yarrow flowers, come up there occasionally. Uh, so here we have five um, green globe artichokes. And let me see if I can find this one right here. Uh, this one has struggled. I'm pretty sure that it is not coming back. It is right here somewhere, but I am going to give it every opportunity. I can't see it. It's always farther somewhere. I can't remember what, oh, there it is. No, that's not it. <laughs> okay, so this thing may have gone. Um, these things struggled all summer because I planted them in the spring. They are a perennial. I should not have planted these in the spring. I should have planted these last fall so that they can spend the year trying to come back. Um, I'm trying to get up here to this one because this is one of the surprises here that we discovered before. Look at that thing. It's actually coming back. Looking good. It's got strong growth. This thing has spent all summer developing roots is what it's done. This is ready to go. So I'm hoping that next spring it takes off. There's another one that was right down in here and I'm almost positive that this one is. Uh, yeah, there it is right there. I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, it does look pretty rough. Uh, however, well, no, let me go up to this one. This is the one that looked strong all summer and now look at it, it's, it's, it's completely brown. I'm hoping that's just gonna be the weather. It is actually going dormant, but this is this is my star. Uh, it is really liking the new weather change that we're having. So I need to come in here, of course, and clean out weeds, and I've been doing it on occasion. Uh, if you didn't catch the video where I cleaned out the uh, blueberry patch, I actually filled three big trash cans of waste, green waste to take away. It was a task. I spent all day a week ago today, in fact, clearing that up. So that was a, that was a task. Uh, the sun chokes. Now, sun chokes. It's a root. So you eat the root. The root is a perfect substitute for diabetics for potatoes. It tastes like potatoes after they're cooked. They're wonderful. Uh, they, don't, they don't make you gassy once they're cooked. And... Look at the yellow flowers starting. And this is what happened last year. These yellow flowers start coming out. Now we did lose a couple. We, we, you'll notice there's a gap right there. Uh, we did lose a couple in some of our wind storms that we had with that uh, remnants of Hurricane Lydia that blew through here uh, last weekend. But uh, I trimmed things off, make sure there, hopefully we get a little more growth out of it, but we're gonna start getting all the flowers. And this thing will develop flowers down to about here. And uh, the flowers, the bees, the butterflies. We have a lot of monarchs here. They all love it. Oh, looky here. I have to see if I can zoom in here on this fella. Can you see him? He is not even looking at me. That is so cool. I love the lizards. They do a great job of keeping down the insect population here. So just want to show you the backside of the sun chokes. That's the fig that we looked at to begin with. But you look at this thing, it's just bending all the way over. We're gonna get a lot of flowers on this next. So it's the season. Next phase of flowers for the garden. Next we look at the trees. Um, the crepe myrtles are above us. And of course they're loaded with berries. The bird love, the ber love these berries. They will play in this all winter and feed. Now this is a persistent crepe myrtle. It doesn't drop its berries. It hangs on to them until the birds pick them off. And they, they eventually will drop whatever's left at the end of the winter. But uh, they're, they're not messy like some crepe myrtles can be. So uh, the sycamore, I wanna show. come back over here and show you the sycamore. You can see it is a lot thinner. Uh, the wind took a lot out. The leaves are starting to change. By the end of next month, the leaves will be gone. And uh, we are, we've already spoken to the fellow who's gonna do some uh, aerial photography and get us a new um, map in this corner that we're gonna be using to show where we are on the property when that thing drops its leaves, which will be very nice. Uh, 
the doomed uh, pear tree, uh, a doomed fence <laughs> that has to get carted away. That was last week's project. Uh, the, uh, the doomed uh, pear tree though is coming down. It's a decorative pear. It really does not offer much value to the garden. It provides flowers for about a second and a half and then it's gone and does nothing more. And the sun shines this way right into the beds right there. It's one of the reasons why I haven't developed those beds yet. Uh, there's supposed to be three more beds on that rise right there. So I want the summer sun to be able to come through this gap and shine on those beds. That'll be nice. This is the cuttings from that sun choke I was telling you we lost. The, uh, the date palm up here, it is, uh, it has continued to make dates. In fact, there's, if, if I can get over here, uh, you can see there are just an absolute ton of dates up in there. Look at all that. Tons and tons. We're not harvesting dates this year. We will get back to that next year, I'm planning. It can only go so far with my energy level. <laughs> so our two big pollinator beds, um, they have, I think, given their last. Uh, there are still a few zinnias struggling along in here. In fact, that white zinnia bet between the geese up there, that thing has been going all summer long and it just keeps producing. Uh, it, it's, a, it's supposed to be like a giant. It's underneath the shade of the sycamore tree and it is just produced and produced and produced. Uh, we do have, of course, a lot of grass in here. We gotta get cleared out. But I did notice that the onion patch here, and this may be my only remaining onion patch right now. I need to take one of these and, and start another onion patch somewhere. So I have it in two places. Uh, the angel trumpet. So, yes, I know that the angel trumpet is toxic. I didn't know how toxic until more recently. Uh, it can cause hallucinations, it can cause anxiety, it can cause stomach ailments just from contact. And uh, it's a pretty rough plant, but I mean, look at these blooms. Is that not just absolutely amazing? Interestingly enough, I don't see bees on these at all. I've never, I have absolutely never seen a bee in there and they're very aromatic. I can smell them just, I mean, from 10, 20 feet away, I can smell them. But we just don't see bees in these things. And uh, so uh, I may enjoy it for a couple few more years. And then I know at some point I might have to get rid of it. Uh, if it's not sooner, I will probably put up a warning sign uh, in the garden here, warning people that we have a toxic plant here. So don't let your dogs, and we dogs don't normally get up in here, so... It shouldn't be a problem, but yeah, we have new geese. Those came back from our move from Arkansas. Uh, they are old geese. We've had them for a very long time, 15 years at least. And uh, they were in front of our cabin in Arkansas for a very long time. Now they're here. I did plant an aloe up in here and uh, it is actually starting to take. It's kind of a I don't know, I'm not that great at designing flower beds, but I thought the change in texture would be fun. There's supposed to be zinnias and lilies all through here. Oh, look at there, there's some more uh, zinnias coming up. I didn't notice this. That's a new zinnia, new zinnia, and a new zinnia right there. How cool is that? Uh, I do have two yarrow in here. There's one right there and there's one over here. And those have done pretty good this winter being in the shade. Uh, I think yarrow is supposed to be a kind of a good mix. Uh, they can handle a mix of conditions. This is one of our lilies. Well, amongst all this grass is one of our lilies I can see in here. These long things. Um, if I can get in here and clean them out, uh, they're bulbs. And I'd like to pull the bulbs and replant them. Uh, some here, some in a couple of places. But this, uh, this pollinator bed actually has... A semblance of its former glory. <laughs> so, another chocolate mint up in here. Actually, I'm thinking about it. 
Yeah, I think that's a chocolate mint. It may be a peppermint. I don't think it is. I think I replanted this thing and it's already taken over the grow bag. Uh, I did mow a path around the back of this. We have the, the four um, Thai plants, the orange things in there. We do have, oh, here's a zinnia growing up in here. This bed actually has more zinnias than uh, the front bed. There are a number of zinnia, but there's also a plethora of stuff in here. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, Amaryllis, the big broad, long broad leaf right there. Grass, ivy, weeds of various kinds, leaf flower, uh, a few other things are in here. Not much to speak about. Coming across to the future tier garden, one, two, three beds are still to be developed. Once that uh, pear tree that I pointed out from the road is removed, I'll be more interested in doing that. Uh, we do have our beans and tomatoes out here. This had shade cloth over it during the peak of the summer. But I wanted to show you, we have harvested uh, almost six pounds of beans out of this right now. Um, this and, the, and now the backyard. But these beans are amazing. This is the Blue Lake stringless pole bean, which means they grow very tall. Oh, and see there's a zinnia growing down there. I've been putting zinnia seeds everywhere. I really like these zinnia seeds. But uh, I did just harvest these yesterday. Got another uh, bean canning video coming up. But you can see there's just tons of babies, little uh, beans coming out everywhere. Uh, it's, and they are, they are literally everywhere. Here's over here to the left. There's a, they're at all stages. I try to come out here and harvest this every day or two. Obviously, I, either I miss that or it finished growing uh, since yesterday afternoon when I harvested but there are tons of, of small beans throughout here that are growing fast. The Roma tomatoes. I am still waiting for something to happen with the Roma. And, 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 and this was an experiment. This, these were all planted the same time as our tomato plants in the back garden were planted. These sat in solo cups a bit longer. I should have potted these up to a larger pot as they waited for the uh, sugar snow peas that were here to be finished and then I planted them here and they still are not holding on to very many buds in fact you can see here look here see all those buds are withering away these are just not doing well and I'm not sure why I have fed them okay I stand corrected there is my first sighting of aroma tomato plant in this bed okay so maybe maybe we'll get something. I am watching this thing closely. I had not seen that one. Uh, that's exciting. Now I'm looking everywhere else, trying to see if there's another one. So we have one. Oh, we have two. There's another Roma tomato right there. One, two. Uh, okay, so this plant's obviously doing something. Um, I don't see anything. Uh, actually, we might have a third one right there. That one looks promising. Let's see if I can get up without yeah i don't want to bend it and possibly break it but that oh there's one right there that's actually starting to come out with a tomato so that's two plants that's starting to produce okay so maybe we will get something out of this may, it hadn't been a lot but maybe we will so anyway there's four on that side four over here on this side this is the biggest one and it's the one that i have i am most surprised that it's not producing anything because it's the biggest, it's the most robust, and it has not, it's just not held on to any of its flowers at all. So it may be weed pressure. Uh, those two down there that are actually producing uh, don't have as much weed pressure. Well, yeah, that one does. That's still got plenty of weed pressure. Anyway, an experiment. There's a lot of basil around here to keep the pests off of these tomatoes. Another mint plant to keep the squirrels away. There's more basil. Um, there's actually a rosemary back over there on that back side over there. So coming up here to the asparagus patch, I am getting ready to pull this tarp off here. I've already removed one tarp that was over here, and there's another tarp that's over there that's ready to come out. In fact, it's so ready, the, uh, the uh, St. Augustine grass is growing over the tarp. I just need to pull all that back. And well, I need to weed this patch. I've got a 
I've got another yarrow down here. We do have yarrow seedlings now. We'll have more yarrow next year to plant. But uh, the uh, one um, asparagus plant is actually looking decent. Uh, I don't know when to cut that back. It looks so healthy right now. I don't want to do it now. Uh, the basil plants, more basil going to seed and bees all over it. As, it, as the morning wear, warms up, uh, that stuff will uh, start to take off. So from the asparagus patch up to the area where the citrus trees are under the date palm. These are the three trash cans that I filled that you saw on the uh, blueberry cleaning. So this is the gra pink grapefruit tree and it's kind of hit and miss right now. Um, still a little concerned. Uh, I haven't seen any new damage since I painted it white though, which I think is good news. I would like to see a lot more growth than it's been getting. However, you can see there's still new growth happening. This one is completely new. There's little things like this uh, here and there as well. So I'm still hopeful of this. I am trying to be careful because um, if you'll notice the leaves, how they're shaped up here and how they're shaped up here. Um, if I come down here, Somewhere right in here is the graft point for this, for the rootstock. And these leaves on this thing may be different. So this thing may need to get popped off. The graft is somewhere right in here. So you don't want stuff growing out of the rootstock because uh, that's a different tree than what you want. So I see, I think that, like that's the graft line right there maybe. I'm not sure if that's what that is or if that's just damage from a, uh, a weed eater. Uh, somewhere in here is going to be a graft and so I have to watch this carefully because if it starts not looking like the rest of the tree then in fact this uh, stem looks different it has these ridges going up it so you got to watch for for signs like that and see so if you look here you see this has kind of ridges going up around the outside this one right above it does not this one well, I guess maybe it does a little bit. I can't quite tell. Uh, I just have to watch this particular cluster because it's, uh, it's beginning to look a little different. And um, the root stock, stock will be one kind of tree. The scion wood, the tree you want, is going to be another kind of tree. You don't want that root stock to start growing branches because that's not the plant you want with any... Uh, grafted tree now like this thing here this looks a little rough but look there's new stuff growing here so looking at my neighbor's pink grapefruit tree it went through the same thing except for his was we're looking directly north his house was protecting this one so it had better protection and it's looking a lot better than mine is so these two citrus trees are really, and this one's got, now, okay, so perfect example is this one right here. This top was a Satsuma orange tree. And you can see here, here's the graft, very clearly a graft, and all this stuff is growing out underneath it. And this, you see these thorns? This is not what this tree was like. This is from the rootstock. It's a different tree. I don't know what kind of fruit this will have on it if it will be edible if it will be prolific or anything else so we will end up replacing this with a uh, with something better that's just all there is to it this thing is obviously on its last legs this one over here it is not growing anything it actually did give a little hope but the sunburn just killed it just did a lot of damage the blueberries back here in fact, if I come back here, um, you might be able to see piles of leafy grassy stuff. What that is, is the lawn cuttings. Hey, let me get down here. You can see there's a pile there and a pile here. Um, I have a, I've got a lot of leaves in the yard right now because it's fall and I will be spreading that out as a mulch. I did put a uh, pretty nice dose of um, acidifier uh, blueberries like acidic soil and i apply that uh, a couple times a year 
to this area so that hopefully in the spring it'll be ready to go. But we're yeah, we'll be mulching with lawn clippings here uh, for a little bit. So coming back, we're on the back of our uh, grape arbor over here. And this thing is in full force. And uh, there are the grapes that I bagged already. If you saw the uh, short, oh, I'm, I need to shake this. I'll try to remember to shake this arbor once before I go in there, because there's a lot of moisture in there and it'll rain on you. Um, but I bagged some of these grapes that were in here and they're still a little bit hard. Uh, they're just about to get soft. They're small bunches. Uh, simply because these are young plants and this is just a mess in here and it's too many plants for this arbor but we will be trimming most of this out here in a month or two to uh, put it into dormancy and begin growing for the next season next year uh, there is one bunch of grapes over here I still need to oh I forgot yeah there's actually a small one here and a large one here that will probably not make it but I'm going to let them go See, I, I still don't know what this thing can do. So I'm going to let those go. I will put an organza bag on those uh, just to make sure they, they uh, have every chance without the birds taking them. You can see there's some bunches up in there. In fact, that one there, look at that small grape still coming out. That's interesting. So there's another bag of grapes there. So these are two that just fell off when I was putting on the organza bags. Anyway, grapes are looking great. I'm very excited about that. We come back to the back of the grapes. We have all our seed starts. My belt got caught on a grapevine. Uh, amazing. We have dragon cayenne and uh, Thai hot peppers growing out of solo cups since, I don't know, what, May? Um... April? Could it be April 22nd? I can't quite tell on that one. Sure enough, April 22nd. These things have been in here since April 22nd. It's now October. That's six months ago. These things have been in these solo cups for six months and still growing. My goodness. I've got a few uh, rosemary plants left over here. Anna, if you're watching, this is your plant came from right there. I have four left, five left. Ooh, if I can rescue this thing, I'll have five left. But uh, they're looking really good. Uh, I've been giving these away. I'm going to root some more. Uh, a lot of, so there used to be tomatoes growing under here uh, in solo cups. All this will get, will get cleared out. This is just a pile of mess. That's all it is, just a pile of mess. Um, we do have a number of pomegranate trees growing in here uh that really need to get potted up something fierce need to get a rescue team in here for that uh me myself and i get these uh repotted it has a lot of leaf flower and other stuff in it but um pomegranate trees yeah so among the other seedlings of course we have the carrots that we planted recently and uh by now you will have seen the that this is the final seed that we planted they are looking great and uh, seedlings everywhere what's going to happen is I will let these grow thick and then as time passes um, and they start developing I will pull one up and there'll be baby carrots and we'll thin them out and we'll eat baby carrots and uh, then uh, the more we thin the bigger some of them will get so eventually we'll get big carrots out of these however this thing right here the elephant in the room anybody know what that is I'm pretty sure that's a potato. I didn't plant that potato there, not this time. This bag was sitting under a tarp all summer and that potato was in this soil, just waiting to grow. And there it is, growing up in the middle of my carrots. So kind of uh, curious to see what happens there. <laughs> It's more a curiosity than anything at this point. Uh, of course, citronella. This bag was supposed to be potatoes, but they are not going to grow. Uh, some random plants here. Uh, wandering Jew and some other curious uh, plants that I'm not sure what they are yet. Uh, poinsettia. 
another poinsettia just from previous Christmases. There's a mountain mint, what I'm calling a mountain mint down there. Uh, jalapenos, these are, oh, these are starting to turn red so I can actually harvest these jalapeno travelers. That's a, uh, I believe that's an orange bell back there. You can see one growing there. I see another one back there too. Um, scotch bonnet, these scotch bonnet peppers are just so prolific. We need to harvest. There's another jalapeno back over here. There's two grow bags there. That's the scotch bonnet, that's the jalapeno. There's another uh, giant red bell pepper. Ooh, there is a bigger one down inside there. Probably should pick that. Once they start getting good color, they'll, they'll continue to get color as far as I know. And this huge citronella here is just enormous. A lot of grass in here. This St. Augustine grass just really grows over everything. There's another Scotch bonnet pepper, and that's a peri peri, a little bit different shape than a jalapeno. And that was a fatale, and it has given up the ghost. This fatale was a number of years old. I'm sure this uh, label is, oh, looky there, 22. Oh, it was just a year and a half old. Hmm, okay but it, it gave its life. Peppers here can last multiple years, two, three, maybe four years, possibly five if properly taken care of. Emphasis on properly. Probably not my best forte. So yeah, front and side. So that is part one of the uh, October 2023 garden tours. Uh, Still stuff going on, still things growing. Uh, if you can grow a variety enough or plant at different times, the garden can apparently always produce for you. I think uh, we're, we're up to six pounds of beans and I think we're just getting ramped up on the beans. Uh, we will continue with the outer garden bed tour. The outer garden bed tour is not uh, doing a lot right now, though we have had some watermelon, um, but we'll get to that out there. Uh, So yeah, I'm, I'm most excited about the blueberries being done um, as far as being cleared out for the season. They, they were really overgrown, just massively overgrown. They were completely covered over the top with vines in some places, in most places, to be honest. Uh, so anyway, uh, um, there's links in the cards in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. And if you're on a device that takes cards, uh, the eclipse is actually starting right now. I actually looked at the, the sun here a minute ago with my glasses. And let me see if I can get a little video here once it gets a little further. We're supposed to be at about 65% at 12.15 p.m. today. So uh, we'll, we'll be able to see some of the, the eclipse. Um, very exciting. Our weather outlook looks good. Um, we're going to have just some nice weather. So very good growing weather. So hopefully our tomatoes will have plenty of time to develop. Uh, I'm really looking forward to um, these Roma tomatoes doing something because Jennifer, uh, Mrs. Bowtie wants some um, tomatoes to preserve this year. We haven't had a lot this year. We didn't have a lot last year. We're still figuring this garden out. Uh, but yeah, we'll go <clears throat> head back to the uh, Next, second part is going to be the outer beds. Uh, by the time this comes out, oh, uh, I would have had the last canning video come out already. Be sure and watch that. It's a full instruction beginning to end on using the Presto Precise Digital Pressure Canner for cold packed green beans. There you go. Um, should be out just a couple few days before this comes out. I'm, I am so, uh, my production schedule has been very uh, peculiar. It took me over a week to edit that uh, that canning video. Had all kinds of troubles with it, uh, but I'm very pleased with how it came out. Uh, best I could do, because getting down to the end and we're having to start to do more production and everything uh, with these garden tours for the month of October and our church is having a big event this weekend. So kind of squeezing this in, but yeah, outer garden bed uh, will be uh, part two. And then part three will be the raised beds and there's stuff going on in the raised beds. Uh, very, <laughs> it's, 
it's just amazing how one month to the next things can look so different. And I actually had to go back and look at last month and the month before to check on a couple things because uh, there's some things that really changed. And this is my own personal journal uh, of what's going on in my garden. And so uh, things, uh, I, I will go back and look at my um, videos to remember what's happened when next year to this year's and last year's now will be my reference points. I'll have a lot of good reference points. Two years from now, I'll have even more reference points. So this is a great way to do this. Um, be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed so you don't miss out anything going on in the garden. And um, uh, if you have subscribed, you are my heroes. I appreciate everyone who has subscribed to help grow the community, not only the community we're growing here at Bowtie Life, but also the community of the uh, gardening and homesteading as a whole. Uh, this is a tremendous resource of information for new gardeners to learn and to, to, to become knowledgeable in how to grow what they want to grow and what to grow and where to grow and, and, and all the information we need uh, to grow your own garden. And I, I really think that um, it's, it's a very good bit of information to have in one's life uh, for several reasons, just to be able to know you can provide for yourself uh, we, we know that there's problems with our food supply and uh, if you can produce some of your own food, uh, then it's a great help. Um, the, uh, you know, we produce a bit more and we actually give away more than uh, quite a bit of what we grow simply because we make too much for us. And that's kind of how I want it. I want to be able to give away uh, some of our produce. So anyway, my brain is already fuzzy. It's new. It's it's not even noon, and uh, my ADD brain is uh, fading fast because it's already been a busy morning. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I'm sure there was probably more I want to say, but we got two more parts of the garden tour to go through, so don't miss those. Be sure and click the thumbs up on this if you thought it was entertaining, inspirational, educational, or informational, uh, and uh, also share on your social media with fellow gardeners, friends of yours who might uh, like to garden or maybe might be interested in starting gardening. So um, all that being said, I think we're coming down to the end of this part and stay tuned uh, for part two of the garden tour, the outer garden beds. Have a blessed day.